One amazing thing about the brain is its neuroplasticity, which is defined as the capacity of the brain to develop and change throughout life. Brain rewiring asks that we change our thought patterns in order to bounce out of the stress response quickly instead of getting stuck there and looping on negative thinking patterns again and again, which causes more stress and can lead to health challenges and symptoms. Hey, have you heard of brain rewiring? It fascinates me, so I just have to share about it with you. In this video, I'm going to share my personal journey with you in case you also have some level of stress in your life. And this can be a starting place for you to calm your nervous system and also rewire your brain. I hope this video is an encouragement to you if you're also experiencing high stress or any chronic health symptoms. First, I'll share a bit about my own health journey, then I'll share some things I've done to try and help my symptoms over the years, and then I'll introduce you to the brain rewiring program I joined in December with Brooklyn and Nick Hanna and some of the awesome wins I've had since starting to rewire my brain and my limbic system. This is going to be the first video in a six part series of videos that I'm going to create all about brain rewiring and what I'm learning. In the next video, I plan on sharing this menu of calm down strategies for my own toddlers when they start to experience a heightened stress response, also known as toddler tantrums, and how it's been so helpful for them and for our relationship as a family. As a disclaimer, I'm sharing this video for informational purposes only and to share my own health journey with you. I'm not a doctor and this video is not medical advice. I am, however, a speech language pathologist, so I do have a master's degree in communication disorders. So I have studied about the brain and how it functions in relation to communication and learning. Okay, so what is brain rewiring as it relates to the stress response? I'll share an overview so we're just on the same page about the basic science. Basically, our thought patterns can lead to either increasing or decreasing the stress response in our body. For example, if you're hiking in the woods and you see a snake on the path, your thoughts about the snake determine what your body does. If you're afraid of snakes, you gasp and according to the Cleveland Clinic's article about the sympathetic nervous system, I'll link the article below, your body goes into a fight, flight, or freeze response, which is a very appropriate and normal response to danger or stress. Our sympathetic nervous system activates and makes physical changes to the state of your body to help you get out of danger. So your eyes, heart, lungs, digestive tract, liver, and other organs work together to help you remain safe. Here's some really cool things that your body does to get you to safety. Your pupils and your eyes dilate to let in more light and improve your vision. Your heart rate increases to improve the delivery of oxygen to other parts of your body, like your muscles and your brain to help you think clearer and mobilize your muscles to run or fight. Your lungs relax your airway muscles to improve oxygen delivery to your lungs. Your digestive tract actually slows down your digestion so that energy that you'd be using to digest can be diverted to other areas of your body. Your body also activates energy stores in your liver to an energy that can be used quickly. This is all a really helpful response. It helps temporarily improve your eyesight, reflexes, endurance, and strength. Your sympathetic nervous system also activates at other times, like when your body is under some kind of strain, like when you're exercising or when you're sick or stressed. Thankfully, we also have our parasympathetic nervous system to step in and calm and relax our bodies after that. The two systems work together in your body and your nervous system to keep your body balanced. Your sympathetic nervous system takes a lead for as long as necessary to get you through a period of danger or a perceived threat. Then your parasympathetic nervous system steps in and returns things to normal. But what do you think could happen when our bodies get stuck in a fight, flight, or freeze state? Or if our bodies are constantly on the edge of tipping into that state very easily? As you can imagine, our bodies aren't built to sustain that level of stress for long, extended periods of time. What I'm learning now is that our thoughts can keep us looping in that stress response long after the perceived threat is gone, which keeps our bodies in a chronic heightened state of stress, which can, as you can imagine, lead to many types of health challenges. For a personal example of my own sympathetic nervous system kicking into gear, someone close to me has asthma and the sound of their coughing makes me remember the past two years of their off and on sickness and they weren't diagnosed with asthma until very recently. When they start to get sick, I hear their bark and cough sound 
and they're rattly breathing and I start to feel on edge. My brain immediately starts to think thoughts like, okay, what do I need to do next? Do I need to call the doctor now? Should we do a breathing treatment now? Where's the nebulizer? Where's the medicine? Is the coughing gonna get worse at night? Should we go ahead and go to urgent care now? They're about to close. Should we wait till the morning? Should we wait it out? What can I do to help? Should I call the doctor? So I'm in a heightened state of stress as I figure out the best plan of action moving forward. My sympathetic nervous system is helping me to think clearly and focus and make wise decisions to help my loved one. But on the flip side, my thoughts about the whole situation can cause me to get stuck in that heightened stress response for longer than necessary. When I didn't have the tools and skills of brain rewiring to change my thinking patterns, I got stuck there feeling overwhelmed, indecisive on what to do, predicting what might happen in the future, and also ruminating on fears and uncertainty. You might hear that same exact coughing sound and feel completely fine and remain very calm because you don't have that same history of caring for someone who's sick with that cough. Your stress responses will be different than mine and different than your neighbors, different than your family members based on your own history of stressors in your own life. Brain rewiring asks that we change our thought patterns in order to bounce out of the stress response quickly instead of getting stuck there and looping on negative thinking patterns again and again, which causes more stress and can lead to health challenges and symptoms. One amazing thing about the brain is its neuroplasticity which is defined as the capacity of the brain to develop and change throughout life. The idea is to identify and pinpoint those old negative thinking patterns that you default to in your thoughts and then disrupt those thoughts and either distract your brain or replace them with new, helpful, healthy thinking patterns. That's why it's called brain rewiring. You're trying to create new default neural pathways. I like to think of neuroplasticity like you're sledding on a snowy hill in the winter and the very first time you have an experience you go down the hill in your sled and you create a track in the snow and that track is smoother than all the other snow so you can go down that track faster the next time you go down the hill so you walk up the hill again and you go down the hill in that same path you're creating a groove in your brain you're creating a neural pathway a neural network in your brain that is an easy and familiar path. This can be a great thing, like when you're learning how to drive, you're learning a new pathway in your brain, but eventually it becomes so automatic, you've gone down that snowy hill in your sled so many times that you don't have to think about all the different steps of turn signal, driving, looking in your mirror, pressing the brake, shifting gears. It's all more automatic, so it's helpful in that way. But where it can be unhelpful is when you get stuck in negative thinking patterns and you're just going down that same path over and over. But the great thing about the brain is that you can create new neural pathways in your brain and create a new direction to go. So if you're going down that snowy hill and you're hitting a tree every single time you go down, you're going to want to change that path. It's just like having a negative thought pattern and you're just hitting that neg negativity and the stress over and over through that negative path. Let's create a new path in your brain that leads you on a different way that's safer. So the hope and goal with brain rewiring is that by creating new neural pathways, you can use your brain's neural plasticity to your benefit and get your brain out of the chronic fight or flight stress response, which can in many cases decrease your health symptoms because your body is more often in a state of rest and digest and calm, allowing your body to repair. I came across Brooklyn and Nick Hanna online in November and I watched all of their YouTube videos on their limbic system rewire YouTube channel in like a week. I was just so fascinated by what they teach. I joined one of their free workshops to learn more and I started implementing what I was learning right away like that day i would learn from their workshop and i would implement that day and i was noticing a huge benefit from it i was experiencing so many new wins and new like perspective shifts and my body just felt like it was getting out of that stress response and so i was just craving more because i had some lingering symptoms that i was hoping to get relief from 
I was so excited to join their six month group coaching program for limbic system rewiring. And I'll talk more about them and their brain rewiring program later in this video. But first I wanted to brief you a bit on who I am in case we've never met before. And I'll openly share some of my health history so you can understand why brain rewiring has been so helpful for me and see if it's something that could be helpful for you too. I'm Adrian. I'm a pediatric speech language pathologist and I specialize in helping babies and toddlers learn how to talk. I share strategies for parents and caregivers of toddlers and young children on my YouTube channel and on my website at learnwithadrian.com. I've taught thousands of people around the world in my two online classes, Sign Language for Beginners and a speech therapy class that helps parents to help their toddlers go from zero words and not talking at all to talking in sentences and having conversations. The baby and toddler stages are one of my favorite stages and I've been staying at home with my two sons who are now two and four years old since they were born. I've loved seeing their language skills blossom from birth until now it's so cool to see their language skills unfold and being able to love and guide them at home in their early years is such a blessing. All right, so let's rewind and I'm gonna share with you very personal information about my health journey before joining the Brain Rewiring Program. Um, I have had several unresolved symptoms and lingering food sensitivities and allergies for many years now. My symptoms actually began in 2013 and 14 when I was exposed to toxic mold daily in my workplace for one and a half years until the mold was finally discovered on the air conditioning unit that was a foot away from me and my students in my speech therapy room. My symptoms from this toxic mold exposure included extreme fatigue, brain fog, stomach pain, difficulty concentrating, swollen lymph nodes, food allergies, and seasonal allergies. I left that job in May when the school year ended and I got married in June. And then we had a death in the family in July. We bought a home in October of that year and we moved in. I started a new job. My husband started a new job. And that year, just with wedding planning leading up to it, being exposed to the toxic mold, figuring that out and trying to navigate those health challenges, I just generally had a level of stress that I hadn't experienced before on top of getting out of that moldy environment and then detoxing from that mold exposure. Over the course of that year, my symptoms just started piling on and seemed to be getting worse and worse each day. I had headaches, fatigue, itchy skin, congestion, very low energy, tenseness in my neck and shoulders, difficulty walking for very long distances without getting a pounding headache and an earache. I would get bloated after eating. I was really lethargic in the mornings when getting out of bed. I just like never felt rested when I would wake up. My eye would sometimes twitch. My jaw started popping when I would yawn. I had these like little tiny bumps on my face, not acne, but just like tiny little bumps on my forehead. I remember, um, I had frequent feelings of sadness and overwhelmed that weren't related to my circumstances. Um, I had brittle nails. I noticed they started to get like thinner. Um, and my neck was actually too stick stiff to look down towards my feet without pain. Like I could only look down a certain amount without it feeling really tight and painful. So these symptoms started to become so normal to my everyday life that I didn't even seek medical help until one day I just like hit rock bottom. I had this super sharp pain in my stomach. It was so sharp and so painful and so acute that like I didn't know what was happening. And so I went to the doctor and um, they recommended that I get tested for food allergies. And when I did, I tested allergic to over 20 foods. And I also had environmental allergens, lots of seasonal allergies, of course, the mold allergy too. So the plan of action was my allergist recommended taking out all the foods I tested positive for. And after a month, seeing if my symptoms improved. I saw no improvement at all after taking those foods out. It was really stressful to try to figure out a whole new way to eat and like starting to become fearful of foods thinking they were going to cause an allergic reaction. So I was referred to a GI doctor, a gastrointestinal doctor, who recommended scoping me to see if I had intestinal damage because of the sharp stomach pain. 
I researched a little bit more about that and I decided not to get scoped and instead decided to take a celiac genetic test. Many signs were pointing towards potential celiac at this point. I tested positive for two of the genetic markers for celiac. So I did decide to take out gluten in January of 2015 because I didn't want to trigger the autoimmune condition and I wanted to see if that would help me. So I've been off of gluten completely since January of 2015. And I did notice that my headaches and fatigue got a little better, but my stomach pain and bloating was still present. And at this point, through my research and talking with doctors, all signs were kind of pointing to leaky gut as the root issue. The book, The Autoimmune Solution, was recommended to me, and I learned in that book how to heal my gut by taking out all the foods that are considered inflammatory and focusing on eating foods that are anti-inflammatory. So I started the autoimmune protocol meal plan for 30 days in June of 2015. And I was super strict about it, following it to a T, and I had amazing results within two weeks. 97% of my symptoms had vanished. It was amazing. Um, I even like took data on my symptoms, so that's how I know 97% of my symptoms were gone because like I was tracking data on myself based on this book. So it was really helpful. I could tell my body was healing because I had very few headaches. I was gaining more energy, I had way less bloating and stomach pains, and I didn't get that brain fog that I used to get, just where everything just seemed kind of hazy. I felt like I was slow to process new information, um, but my brain fog was just cleared and lifted. It was just like almost a fog had been lifted from me. Also, I found that I didn't need to take medication for my seasonal allergies anymore, and I started naturally waking up at like 5 a.m. <laughs> feeling rested, like completely rested. My brain was clear. I had a ton of creativity in the mornings. And that's actually when I started my Learn with Adrian YouTube channel and I started creating my website and online classes. I did have some lingering stomach issues, so I saw a functional medicine doctor for that. They did blood work, stool tests, and breath tests and discovered that I had SIBO, which is an imbalance in the small intestines. So I was treated for that, which seemed to help clear up some of the lingering stomach symptoms I was experiencing. We wanted to start our family through adoption first and then have biological children after that. We adopted our first son at birth in February of 2019. And then in February of 2020, I found out that I was pregnant. So having a one-year-old and being pregnant during the pandemic was an experience in itself. And I'm sure you vividly remember the various stressors of the year of 2020. Then a week after I gave birth in October, we found out that we would be moving five hours away from my husband's job, leaving behind our entire family and community of friends and church community to move to a city where we knew two people. <laughs> we sold our home, bought a home in Chattanooga, and then 10 months later, my husband was able to get a different job back where we had just moved from. So we sold our house in Chattanooga and then bought a house here where we used to live 10 months prior. So we did all that packing, moving, packing, moving, selling the house, buying a house, all of that with two boys under the age of two. So just thinking about that year and those couple years makes my brain start to like loop in old thinking patterns of stress and I can even feel my body kind of tensing up right now. So back to my health. When it came time to reintroduce foods that I had needed to avoid for a long time in order to heal my gut, I noticed that I was internally fearful of the symptoms that I used to have when I was at rock bottom before I needed to avoid certain foods. And in turn, I started to feel fearful towards certain foods because I had a negative association with them causing my body pain in some way. Now, learning what I've recently learned through the limbic system rewiring program, I understand that I can change that negative association with brain rewiring and using neuroplasticity to my benefit. Before I'd even learned about brain rewiring, in 2020, I really came to understand on a personal level the link between the brain and the body when I was pregnant with our second son in 2020. Throughout my pregnancy, I researched and learned techniques for deep breathing and relaxation methods using Christian hypnobirthing techniques to train my mind to breathe effectively for deep relaxation during labor. So I've seen firsthand the benefits of training my brain. The idea is that when the body and the mind are in a completely relaxed state and your breathing is steady and intentional, 
the muscles and hormones in your body can work the way that they're meant to work during childbirth instead of fearing the process and stirring up a lot of adrenaline in your body which freezes the birthing process and it tenses up your muscles which in turn can cause labor to slow down and become more painful because your body doesn't think it's safe to give birth yet because you think like you're in the fight flight or freeze mode and you think that you need to like get to safety before you can be calm to deliver your baby using those techniques i was able to deliver our son completely naturally with no medical interventions, which is what I had hoped for. Having that experience really solidified the brain and body connection for me and helped me to understand the power of breathing deeply in order to help your body calm. Back to Brooklyn and Nick Hanna and their brain rewiring program. I'm so excited to tell you about what they do and how they've helped me already and I've only been in the program for two months. They're a husband and wife team and their goal is to help people get out of the chronic fight, flight, or freeze stress response and help to rewire the brain so that you can get back to your healthy and vibrant self. I'm taking this information from their website, so I'll introduce Brooklyn based on what she wrote about herself. Brooklyn is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, a cognitive behavioral coach, and a registered nurse who specializes in brain retraining. Her husband, Nick, is a certified Christian life coach who also specializes in brain retraining. Brooklyn got hit with over 20 chronic symptoms after toxic mold exposure, as well as various other stressors. She went to dozens of doctors, both conventional and natural. She had some improvements with functional medicine, running labs, detox, supplement protocols, etc. But she knew something was missing because she was not seeing the results that she desired. She then discovered brain rewiring and neuroplasticity and went all in, giving it her 100% focus. Out of all the things that she's tried, she said brain retraining has made the biggest impact in reversing many chronic symptoms leading to her recovery. Brooklyn created her own brain retraining program called Limbic System Rewire to help others rewire their brain for health, happiness, and for Christ. Through this whole journey, her husband Nick has been by her side and he has seen it all. Nick has watched her life be completely transformed through brain rewiring in Christ. He's always had a deep desire to come alongside and help people. So Brooklyn trained Nick on her limbic system rewire program. They are now both helping others walk in the spirit and deepen their relationship with Christ and use neuroplasticity skills to balance the nervous system. They now have a baby son and they'll be passing along their knowledge to him as he grows up. Since I started their program in December, one of the most impactful exercises they had me do in their online program is to read the list of 70 old wired loops and tally my score. So old wired loops are basically thinking patterns that commonly heighten the stress response. I've always thought of myself as a calm person who looks on the bright side of things and sees the positive in people and situations. It takes a lot to ruffle my feathers, but in reading through their old wired loops list, it was a huge eye opener in uncovering the thought patterns that I've internally had that have led to my heightened stress response internally. Externally, I was calm, cool, collected, but internally, man, I had no idea that certain thought patterns I've had running default in my brain were increasing my stress response significantly, like significantly. No wonder I was continuing to have internal health challenges. I've learned that I was contributing to being stuck in the stress response by ruminating about symptoms in my mind, predicting symptoms in the future based on foods I would choose to eat and to reintroduce into my meals. I would get stuck in indecision and overwhelm. I would procrastinate. I've procrastinated as long as I can remember. I focus on too many things at once. I have a history of people pleasing and perfectionism and many more thinking patterns that were uncovered um, through looking at the, that list of 70 old wire loops. Um, and many more thinking patterns that were just in a constant loop in my mind that I thought were completely normal that everyone else was thinking too. So since implementing their seven step process, I've had many wins already. I'm able now to disrupt my old thoughts, like completely disrupt them, thoroughly disconnect from them, and then intentionally create new neural pathways, just like that snowy hill when you're sledding down and creating new neural pathways in my brain 
using the tools and strategies that they teach in their program. Their program is a Christian program, which I highly value because the focus is setting our mind on Christ and eternity instead of setting our mind on temporary things in this life that aren't even eternal. There are other secular brain rewiring programs out there that focus on emptying your mind. But this program focuses on filling your mind with truth to replace lies so that your body can rest and heal and it emphasizes your relationship with God, which leads to a lasting peace that's deeper than emptying your mind could ever do. I plan on doing a monthly update on my progress with brain rewiring for the next five months. So if you have questions about this, please comment below or email me and I can take your questions into consideration as I make new videos on this topic. As you know, my children are now four and two years old, and I also really want to share how committing to rewiring my brain has indirectly impacted my children in some really cool and beneficial ways. In my next video, I plan on sharing this menu I created of calm down strategies for my toddlers so they can see a visual menu to choose from when they start to experience a heightened stress response, aka toddler tantrums. If you've watched me this far in the video and you're interested in all this and you're interested in learning more about how Brooklyn and Nick might be able to help you get out of your own chronic stress response to hopefully decrease your health challenges and help you navigate life with more peace, calm, and confidence, I've included the links in the description of this video below to their information and I'll also pin the links in the top of the comments. If you scroll down, you should be able to find them in those two places really easily. Their six month group coaching program is what I joined and it provides a ton of support, helpful trainings, the whole video course, three Facebook live videos each week where they answer your questions and my questions. And they also demonstrate their seven step process each week on Wednesdays to really solidify it in your brain as you rewire. They provide personalized feedback on your milestones throughout the program and the encouragement and accountability from the other people in the Facebook group who are working on brain rewiring is so, so helpful. You get to see everyone's wins on Wednesday. People post their wins and the relief that they're experiencing from symptoms and their chronic stress response. And it's just been so helpful and uplifting and encouraging. It really gives me hope for the future for not only me, but also for my sons. It gets me really excited to teach these strategies to my own children. So they have them for life. They can just like go into life from a very young age, being equipped with tools to manage their stress response to various stressors in life that are bound to come up. If you're interested in the same program that I'm in, you can really easily schedule a phone call through the link below with their team and you can tell them a little bit about your situation and they can tell you if it would be a good fit for you. If you call for more information and you talk to their team members, make sure you let them know that you found out about them through me, through Adrian on YouTube. They would love to know that. They also offer an option, which is just the course video trainings and workbooks without the Facebook group coaching element. I've included links to both options for you to learn more if it seems like something that would be helpful to you. Remember to click the thumbs up on this video and subscribe and stay tuned for my upcoming monthly videos about how my brain rewiring process is going. I can't wait to share my journey along the way. See you in the next video.